Have you ever thought about how incredible it is that you can call up a cat video, or Star Wars Kid, or Swifty's latest music video, or hey, me, on your screens almost anywhere in the world? The internet allows for apparently instantaneous communication between any device on any continent, regardless of the mountains or oceans that may stand in the way of where that film began its life. But how is this possible? First, to make sure we're all on the same page, let's talk about what the internet actually is. At the most fundamental level, it's data. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of data moving between connected devices at unthinkable speeds in unfathomable quantities. When you update your status, you watch a fail compilation, or browse your matches on the dating app du jour, you're really just matching with a series of zeros and ones. Even yours truly. On your screens right now, I'm just data being sent and received on demand. But that data has to have something to travel through. At short distances, it can be beamed through the air as Wi-Fi. But as experience will tell you, too much distance or an awkwardly placed wall can block that data from coming through. So over longer distances, internet data is carried by cables underground, which is all very well and good until the ground runs out. If you want to watch your favourite Earth Lab video in America or Australia, how does the data of my face get there from here in England when there's a whole load of ocean in the way? The answer, you might be surprised to learn, is more cables. Yeah, our planet may be surrounded by hundreds of satellites, but they're not ideal for carrying the vast amounts of data that we need at the speeds that we've come to expect. While we may think that we're all now living in the cloud, our internet data is still bound to a global network of wires, a world wide web, as it were. Funny that. But you might have noticed that there aren't any cables strung precariously across the Atlantic. Neither do ships have to run a gauntlet of trip wires while they're navigating the globe. And that's of course because great efforts have been made to lay the cables out of harm's way, as far as 8,000 metres below the surface, at the bottom of the ocean. In total, around 350 cables, totalling nearly 900,000 kilometres in length, have been sunk to the bottom of the ocean to carry all of our internet traffic. That's enough cable to go 22 and a half times around the equator, or more than enough to make it to the moon and back. But here's something amazing. The undersea wires that form the backbone of the internet across the oceans are only the width of a human hair. And as unbelievable as that may sound, it's true. In fact, it's only by using minutely thin fibre optic cables that the vast quantities of internet data are even able to cross the seas. Yep, you heard me right, fibre optics, same as this. These tiny glass threads are shaped in such a way that any light shone along them stays inside thanks to something called total internal reflection. For the nerds, the angle of instance always exceeds the critical angle, so the waves reflect back into the more dense medium. Essentially, what that neat bit of physics means is that the fibre optic thread can bend and flex as much as it likes, but the light will always bounce its way along inside and come out the other end the same as it was when it went in. Using lasers in this way means that all of our data can be transmitted by simply switching the light on and off really, really fast to give the continuous stream of ones and zeros that make up the data that we send and receive every day. It's a bit faster than that. But all those bits, those bytes, those kilobytes, those megabytes, those gigabytes, those terabytes. Those... Okay, I'll stop. The neat thing is that sending different wavelengths of light and different laser orientations down the fibre, you can have loads of different information streams all flowing at once. They're so effective that a single hair-thin fibre can transmit up to 10 gigabits a second. That's enough to stream 10,000 videos at once, all through just one of these. Mad! Each undersea cable doesn't just have one optical fibre though. By bundling several together, you can get even more data flow, and in two directions too, meaning an entire country could make phone calls at once through a single cable. But the fibres can't just be sunk naked to the bottom of the ocean. They are incredibly fragile and incredibly precious. So engineers go to great lengths to make sure that they are protected from whatever the ocean can throw at them. 
They're coated in layer upon layer of all sorts of materials, including metal tubing to stop the cable kinking, plastic and rubber to keep out the salt water, and steel strands and even Kevlar-like strapping to protect from cuts and breakages. By the time you've added all of that, communications cables go from a fraction of a millimeter in diameter to roughly the width of a garden hose. In shallow waters, they need even more protection, so it can be up to 10 centimetres across. Oh, and it's no simple task to get the cables down there either. They're plugged in at landing stations on the shore and floated into position on the surface before sections are dropped and buried beneath the ocean sediment. Then, special cable-laying ships with massive spools of cable tow a submersible plough that digs a trench plops the wire in as it unwinds from the ship. Amplifiers are put in every 50 kilometers or so to boost the data signal, and ships will often work from each end to join the cable in the middle. The roots of these internet lifelines are no accident either. They are carefully planned to pass across some of the flattest and most geologically stable terrain, and there is of course some slack built in to allow for shifts in the seafloor during earthquakes. Still, there's no escaping the many risks that these all-important cables face, from the mundane, like anchors accidentally tearing across them, to the ridiculous, like sharks. Yes, sharks occasionally munch on our internet cables. Since an entire country's connection to the rest of the world can rely on just a few delicate fibres, a breakage, whether accidental or intentional, can majorly disrupt internet traffic, literally cutting them off for about five days while a repair ship finds and fixes the problem. That is an awfully long time to go without the internet. I can barely last half an hour. So take a moment whilst you are looking at my face here to appreciate the epic cabled journey it has taken to get me onto your screens. Moving image turned into electrical signals, then those changed into light, plunged to the depths of the ocean, dodging a few shark attacks, underwater volcanoes, and voila, eventually to you. And you never know when your lifeline to the rest of the world might be cut. If you enjoyed this video, please do send uh, some sweet laser likes and comments through the cables. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Earth Lab for more science videos. See you next time.